Hey everybody and welcome back. Today is January 22nd of 2021. In this video we're going to talk about the synchronicity between two deaths in the media that hit the news over the past day. Yesterday on the 21st we learned about the death of Packers GM Ted Thompson at the age of 68. Today we learned about the death of Hank Aaron early this morning who passed away at the age of 86. Now in this video, we're going to look at the numerology that connects these two men through Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers, who was the first player drafted by Ted Thompson after taking over as GM in Green Bay. We're also going to talk about the Super Bowl a little bit. I did a little work last week on the numerology of the teams remaining and just want to chat about possible themes, things that may be happening as we go into the weekend. So let's get into the numerology of this story. So once again, we have Hank Aaron dying today, the 22nd. And then we have Ted Thompson, who is the man who drafted Aaron Rodgers. Aaron, or I'm sorry, Ted Thompson dying on January 20th. Now these two men are connected geographically through sports. Throughout his career, Hank Aaron only ever played for two baseball teams, the Braves and the Brewers. When he started his career, the Braves still played in the city of Milwaukee. The team then moved to Atlanta, and Aaron played with that team until 1975 when he spent the end of his career with the Milwaukee Brewers. So he only ever played in Wisconsin and Georgia. Hank Aaron passed away in the city of Atlanta, Georgia. Meanwhile, Ted Thompson, whose Green Bay Packers play their home games in the state of Wisconsin, the same state of Milwaukee, Ted Thompson died in the city of Atlanta, Texas, the same town in which he was born. Now, if you're like me, you didn't even know Texas had a city named Atlanta before today. But what are the odds that this man dies in Atlanta, Texas, within a couple days of Hank Aaron dying in Atlanta, Georgia? Notice how the name Thompson sums to 120 in the alphabetic order. This matches the reverse value of Atlanta. And Thompson's death fell on January 20th, the date written 1 slash 20. Also worth mentioning that Atlanta, Georgia has matching gematria with both Super Bowl and Super Bowl 55 in the ordinal ciphers. Again, whether or not this is a riddle for the Packers in the Super Bowl is something we'll discuss towards the end. The states of Wisconsin and Georgia are infinitely linked through the number 44, as they're the only two states with gematria of 44. In fact, both states elected a governor with 44 reduction gematria on the same day back at the end of 2018. And think about how they're connected through sports. Remember, the Atlanta Braves moved from Milwaukee to Atlanta. The last Packer quarterback before Aaron Rodgers was Brett Favre. And Brett Favre came from the Atlanta Falcons, traded to the Green Bay Packers the year before he began playing. Consider also how the state of Georgia, the University of Georgia specifically, has a logo that matches the Green Bay Packers G. Their mascot is a bulldog, which has matching gematria in the base method with Packers. In both Wisconsin and Georgia, Hank Aaron's number 44 is retired. Hank Aaron died 44 years after hitting his final home run. And there's an interesting note about this number in Wikipedia. Hank Aaron considered 44 his lucky number. And he even hit 44 home runs in four different seasons. His record-breaking home run even came off of a pitcher who, coincidentally, as they say, 
also wore number 44. Aaron Rodgers, intriguingly, has matching Gematria with both home run king and home runs. But what's more interesting is that Hank Aaron died on the date 1-22. This is very similar to Aaron Rodgers' birthday, which is 12-2. In the language of Gematria, both Aaron and Rodgers sum to 86. Hank Aaron died at the age of 86 years old. If the Packers can defeat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this weekend, it would be their 806th win in franchise history. In the alphabetic order, the name Aaron sums to 49. This matches the reduction value of Ted Thompson. Notice how the phrase home run equals 94. Aaron, the home run king, 49 and the reflection 94. Well, when Aaron Rodgers was born, Hank Aaron was 49 years, 9 months, and 4 weeks old, exactly, like 49 and 94. Hank Aaron died a span of 52 days after the birthday of Aaron Rodgers. 52 is the sum of Hank Aaron in reverse reduction, also his real name, Henry Aaron. He was born on the 5th of February, or 5-2. Think about the name Ted, summing to 52 in the reverse alphabetic order. Meanwhile, Ted Thompson died exactly 49 days after the birthday of Aaron Rodgers. This date also falls 316 days before Rogers' next birthday. The name Aaron equals 49, and in Jewish gematria, Rogers sums to 316. Again, Ted Thompson was the man who drafted Aaron Rodgers, and in fact, that was his first draft pick for the team back in the year 2005. And actually, 2005 is kind of interesting, too, because Hank Aaron's birthday, February 5th, or 2-5. Home runs are often called moonshots in the game of baseball, and this is particularly true in Milwaukee. Ever since I was a kid going to Brewer games, they would put moonshot up on the scoreboard every time a Brewer player would hit a home run. And I've done a lot of work on this. In fact, in my blog posts, you'll find links to other posts talking about the Brewers' numeric relationships to the moon. Brewers has matching gematria with the moon in the base ciphers. Their announcer, Bob Euchre, his name and full name have matching gematria with the moon as well. One of the most significant moon cycles is 223 lunar phases long. That's called the Saro cycle, and it allows us to predict the next eclipse. In ancient Hebrew gematria, the moon equals 223. The Milwaukee Brewers are owned by Mark L. Atanagio, who who purchased the team for $223 million. That's the value of both the Milwaukee Brewers and Mark L. Atanagio. Perhaps the most significant number of the moon is 666, and this all starts with the the Earth's tilt to the sun. Its polar axis, 66.6 degrees to the plane of the sun. The moon has matching gematria with 666. You have the magic square of the sun, which is 666, among other things. Now again, looking at the number of days between Hank Aaron's birthday and Aaron Rodgers. Of course, we saw the alignment with Aaron and home run before, but this is also exactly 666 orbits of the moon around the earth something we call sidereal months. When you write out 666, it sums to 122, much like the date of death of Hank Aaron and the birthday of Aaron Rodgers. In the alphabetic order, 666 sums to 201. Ted Thompson died on the date 20-1 in the year 21. 
Ted Thompson equals 201 with capital letters taken into account. Also notice how Aaron Charles Rogers equals 201 in ordinal. Hank Aaron's full name equals 210 in reverse, both of these representing the numbers 21. More on the moon riddle uh, at the end of this video when I look at the blog posts. So as we mentioned, Hank Aaron died at the age of 86, which is the value of both Aaron and Rogers. Well, 86 is connected to another significant number. Consider how 86 is the sum of both 19 and the 19th prime number, which is 67. Notice how Green Bay, Wisconsin sums to 109 when abbreviated. The number 19, when spelled out, equals 86. The number 19 is primarily significant due to its relationship to the metonic cycle, which is a period of almost exactly 19 years. Ted Thompson died a span of 19 days before the Super Bowl. Hank Aaron was 19 years old when Ted Thompson was born. The name Ted even equals 109 in Jewish gematria. Now this 19 years also syncs up with 235 lunar phases, almost exactly. The name Ted also sums to 235 in the trigonal method. He died on the 20th of January, which sums to 235 in the alphabetic order. Now this metonic cycle riddle is definitely no joke. For years, I've been saying that there is a metonic cycle riddle with Packers Super Bowls. And this could very well be pointing us at another one this year. Notice how in Jewish gematria, metonic cycle sums to 668. This is the reflection of 866, which is the value of Aaron Charles Rogers in the Satanic Method. Today, on the date of the death of Hank Aaron, notice how Ted Thompson would be six days after his 68th birthday. And I want to tie this all together because I really do think this is important. And I don't, you know, based on the numbers that I ran, I actually thought Tampa Bay would be in the Super Bowl and probably winning it. But this, of course, has me thinking it tw over twice. Now, again, consider the date of death of Ted Thompson, 120, like 1-2 in numerology. Now, the Packers have won both Super Bowls, 1 and 2. The Packers also won Super Bowls 31 and 45. Now these numbers are closely linked to the metonic cycle through prime numbers. The 31st and 45th prime numbers are 127 and 197. These are the ordinal values of metonic cycle, 127 and 197. In the reduction methods, Metonic cycle sums to 55 and 62, and this is where it gets even more interesting. This year, Super Bowl LV, or 55, which sums to 55 in Gematria, and Ted Thompson died on a date with 62 numerology. So could it be that the Packers are in Super Bowl 55 after having these metonic cycle riddles with their previous victories? Not only does SBLV sum to 55, but Super Bowl 55 falls 55 days after the most recent total solar eclipse. The 55th prime number is 257, like total solar eclipse and Green Bay, Wisconsin. Both of these phrases also summing to 202, and this last eclipse was in the year 2020. Regarding the number 62, the reverse value of metonic cycle, Ted Thompson dying on a date with this numerology, this is also the sum of sacrifice in the same cipher. Meanwhile, Hank Aaron died in Georgia, which equals 62. Notice how the numerology of the date of his death has matching numbers with Packers in reduction. Ted Thompson died in Atlanta, Texas. In the alphabetic order, both Atlanta and Texas equals 69, which is the ordinal value of Eclipse. Several weeks ago, I made a post detailing why Super Bowl 55 would be 
a uh, an extraordinary eclipse riddle. Ted Thompson's death fell a span of exactly 41 months after the Great American Eclipse. In reduction, Green Bay, Super Bowl, and Rogers all summed to 41. This weekend will be the Packers' 1,444th game in franchise history. 1,444 is 38 squared. 38, a number of moon in Hebrew ordinal. In English gematria, 38 is a number strongly linked with death. Killing, RIP, and murder also summed into 38. Ted Thompson died a span of 38 days after the last total solar eclipse. He also died a span of three years and 80 days before the next great American eclipse. Now next, I just want to give a couple of items to think about. Recently, we had this big false flag attack in Nashville where a man set off an RV bomb in the middle of the street in the morning. Well, what I noticed about that is that, of course, this occurred in Tennessee, and the, the weekend of that bombing, the Tennessee Titans played the Packers, which is a matchup which only occurs once every four years. <clears throat> that bombing was on a date with 77 numerology. Green Bay equals 77 in the alphabetic order, and the last time the Green Bay Packers won the Super Bowl... Hank Aaron turned 77 years old that same weekend. This was the last day this bombing was, with 77 numerology in the year 2020. And 77 equals 2020 in Gematria. Consider how Tennessee is the home of the Tennessee Titans, or TT, like 2020. Now we get the death of Ted Thompson, TT 2020. The Titans lost that game by a score of 14 to 40. This could be because of its connection to the number 44, Hank Aaron 44, which sums to 144. The number 144 and 1440 appear in the book of Revelation several times as well. A couple more interesting things about the name Hank. Hank Aaron broke the home run record in the year 74, and the name Hank equals 74. In ordinal, Hank equals 34, and Hank Aaron was born in the year 34. The 34th prime number is 139, which is the reverse value of Green Bay. This number connects us to both Ted Thompson and Green Bay, Wisconsin. The 139th prime being 797. What I did not list is that what also equals 797 is the phrase total solar eclipse in this satanic cipher. Now, a couple other things I wanted to look at in regards to this moon riddle. So we mentioned how Aaron Rodgers was born exactly 666 sidereal phases or sidereal months after Hank Aaron, right? Notice how moon has this value of 57 and 51 in our ordinal ciphers. Well, if you measure from the date that Ted Thompson drafted Aaron Rodgers to the date that Ted Thompson died, you get exactly 5,751 days. In this post, I put some links to posts about Rodgers and the moon. Now, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers have won one Super Bowl so far, and if you measure from that Super Bowl, which Ted Thompson helped put together, that team, to the date of Thompson's death, you get exactly 3,636 days. The moon equals 36 and 36. The name Rodgers. Uh, Rodgers does not equal 36, but he recently, you know, he turned 36 last year. Um, actually, this post here, this was a post that I made about a game that took place one day before Roger's 36th birthday. And the score of this game was 13-31, to 31, a big-time eclipse number.
Another interesting thing about Ted Thompson is that I've long been documenting about how the Packers are coded with the moon and Saturn. And Saturn and the moon are probably the two celestial objects that are most closely linked. And this has a lot to do with their orbital uh, cycles. The moon's lunar cycle, the lunar phase, I should say, is 29 and a half days. Whereas Saturn takes 29 and a half years to orbit the sun. The planet Saturn equals 30 in Gematria. It has an orbital period of just under 30 years. The Packers' first coach, Curly Lambeau, coached the team for 30 years. And think about how after the Packers made back-to-back -back Super Bowl appearances in 1 and 2, they made back-to-back -back appearances again 30 years later in 31 and 32. Now, Ted Thompson was born on January 17, 1953. If you watched my video on the Nashville bombing, you know that January 17th is a significant date. In fact, the Nashville bomber, Anthony Warner, was born on January 17th. That's because January 17th was the date that we began counting lunar phases. This is called the Brown Lunation number. So if you go to time and date and look up the lunar calendar, you'll see a lunation number next to each phase. And this count goes back to January 17th of 1923. So I find it interesting that Ted Thompson was born on the 30th anniversary of the Brown Lunation number being instituted. All right, guys, that'll do it for this video. Thanks to everybody for chiming in whether it's live or archived, do feel free to like, share, and subscribe as whatever we can to help the algorithm is appreciated these days. Oh, and actually, I'm not going to end the video here. Uh, I wanted to do a little of a dig here. Um, so sorry for the preempted thing, but I think you'll appreciate this. I just want to pull up the table, and again, I am, by no means am I an authority in sports predictions, and last year at this time, I had the 49ers. I ended up changing my pick last year after Kobe Bryant died due to his relations with Jimmy Garoppolo, and Jimmy Garoppolo had a season-long Venus riddle, Venus being related to Kobe Bryant in Gematria, so... Understand, whatever I call here, you probably shouldn't pay much attention to because it usually gets changed or whatever, but I just want to talk about some interesting things. So, perhaps the most interesting thing, running the same numbers that I ran last year that helped me pick out that the Chiefs would win, um, all of this pointed to Tampa Bay for me. And I took as many notes as I could. These notes are alignments for Tampa Bay based on total franchise wins and games, Bruce Arians and Tom Brady's career records. Um, we're just looking at a snapshot of the most basic numerology. And there are many alignments for Tampa Bay. Um, I don't want to go over all of these, but one of my favorite ones was that... Um, Oh, geez. Maybe you guys should just read what I have on here. Pause it if you have to, but it's just a number of things. And I couldn't really find anything interesting in the alignments for any of the other teams. Now, this doesn't mean that Tampa Bay will win because riddles are never this obvious. And there's usually something more with the Super Bowl. Now, every year in the Super Bowl, it's not just a numerical thing. There's also an overarching theme. And when we look at a list of Super Bowls, this is going to become very clear. We know that this has hap been happening since the very beginning. It all goes back to Super Bowl three, won by the New York Jets. This game was played the same month that construction started on the South Tower of the World Trade Center. And then it was Jets in New York that ended up taking the World Trade Center down. Of course, that team was head, uh, quarterbacked by Broadway Joe, which equals 119, like September 11th. 
I have a whole post on those alignments, but you know, Super Bowls again, they're not real. Uh, these are riddles of some sort, and it goes back to the beginning. But since I've been paying attention, you know, go back to Super Bowl Fifty. Uh, we had the the white Broncos against the Black Panthers. Remember, uh, we had the Black Panther tribute at halftime. The quarterback of the Black Panthers is Cam Newton. The founder of the Black Panthers is Huey Newton. <laughs> um, and in fact, those guys are probably related. So that was the theme, was the race war bowl. That was when all, you know, all the cop killings became big news. In Super Bowl 51, we had this big 25 riddle. And this game was right after Trump took office. Of course, Trump equals 25, the first Jesuit president. This was shortly after the first Jesuit pope, 25. The pope even showed up on the uh, big screen before that game. And then this game was all about 25. It took place on 2-5. They moved the touchback to the 25-yard line. Uh, the game-winning touchdown was scored by a 25-year-old. It was Tom Brady's 25th playoff uh, game. It was the AFC's 25th playoff su uh, Super Bowl. It goes on and on. Then we had the American Flag Bowl, 52. Now, the American flag was first sewn in Philadelphia. And the address was 239, the address where it was sewn. And 239 is the 52nd prime number. This was the 52nd Super Bowl won by the city where the flag was written or sewn. And of course, they played the team with the American flag on their helmet, the Patriots. Then we had Super Bowl 53, and 53 is just the football number. You have the football in the shape of the Vesica Pisces, 53, the 53-yard wide field, 53-man rosters, etc. And there was only one touchdown scored in this game, and it happened exactly 53 minutes into the game. The Rams only scored three points, and that came on a 53-yard field goal. This was all a tribute to the 1953 NFL Championship as well. Now, last year, we had the Joe Montana Bowl. It was both teams that Joe Montana played for. Patrick Mahomes has matching gematria with Joe Montana as well as his birthday. He would have made Joe Montana 5-0, Chiefs equals 50, Super Bowl, or uh, the 50th Super Bowl of the modern era, and it was 50 years since the Chiefs won the la their last title. So now, what's the theme for this game? Shout out to Lambda115, who, sh who uh, caught the potential... Great Reset Bowl. If this game features the Bucks and Bills, think about Bucks and Bills both being used to refer to money, it could be that the Bucks and Bills both make the Super Bowl the same year as the Great Reset. So that to me is a very legit theme, and I think there's a great possibility that happens. Of course, now you get this death of Ted Thompson and Hank Aaron hinting us at the fact that maybe the Packers will win, but understand that just because there's a death related to a team doesn't mean that team does well. Last year, we had the death of Chris Dolman. Dolman played for the San Francisco 49ers for three seasons, and then he died right before the 49ers played in the Super Bowl. Well, remember, the 49ers ended up losing the Super Bowl. So this could very well mean that the Packers lose this weekend. And there are a couple alignments. Um, as someone in the chat mentioned, Aaron Rodgers will be 11-9 and nine in the playoffs if, uh, if he loses to Tampa Bay. And that 11-9 number is threaded throughout the Buccaneers and this Super Bowl. Um, the 186th prime number is 11-09. Bruce Arians equals 186, and he was hired 108 weeks and six days before the Super Bowl, which falls 180 weeks and six days before the second Great American Eclipse. So this was a really strong part of the riddle. Um, the coach is always going to be hired in relation to the date of the game, so I think that's significant. Um, so that's where I stand now. I think it's going to be Tampa Bay and Buffalo, but there's... You know, there's no real numerical riddles for Buffalo or KC that I found in my brief review. Um, so that's still up in the air as far as I'm concerned, but that's my take. I'll leave it there. Again, do your own research, and I don't even really recommend that anyone bet on sports, but um, 
you know, if you do, the Super Bowl is the game to do it. So, all right, guys, once again, peace, love, God bless, and we'll talk to you next time. See ya.